John chapter 5 verses 1 through 18 tells the story of the pool of Bethesda. Bethesda literally means house of mercy, but in this case it was also a house of misery for many. The pool was situated where there were intermittent mineral springs and an angel would come and stir up the waters and whoever was first in the water at the time that the springs were stirred would be healed. And there were people that would go there every day with all sorts of afflicted bodies and they would wait for the stirring of that water and then they would wait to get inside. And there were five porches which were covered areas where the sick folk would await their opportunity to get into the healing pool. And Jesus was walking through and he was attracted not to everyone there, but according to scripture, he was attracted to one poor sufferer. Now I gotta tell you, that means a great deal to me. I'm a very insecure person. And to think that Jesus could even know this little old Rick in Lillian, Texas. But I read of this scripture and I know that he never lost sight of the individual. That omnipotence means omnipresence. <laughs> this morning I want you to know this five things. I want you to know this the market, the multitude, the man, the Messiah, the mercy, and the message. And, and I want to first check out the market. There is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool called in Hebrew Bethesda, having five porticos. And that sheep market was just inside the sheep gate in the Jerusalem wall. And this was the gate through which all the lambs were brought to be offered as sacrifices by worshipers in the temple. And those who traveled to Jerusalem from other cities at Passover time would bring, could not bring their own sacrificial animals and so they would buy them at the sheep market. Now I want to break down verse 2. There is. That means ever present. The pool was always there whether people went to it or not. And we serve an amazing Jesus whose arms are always open. Are you getting this? And even if we don't seek him out, he's still there waiting for us. By the sheep market, that's the sheep gate. That's the place where the sacrifice was made. And the Old Testament sheep gate represents the New Testament cross where the Lamb of God was slain. There is a pool. This pool had a healing balm about it. And those who came to it found healing. And those who come to the cross and submit to the Lord Jesus Christ can be healed and made completely whole. I mean, are you getting this? There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins and sinners plunged beneath that flood lose all their guilty stains. And then there's the multitude. In these lay a multitude of those who are sick, blind, lame, withered, waiting for the moving of the waters. And there was a great multitude of people that filled these five porches waiting for the next opportunity to get in. And they're very sick people. The condition speaks of physical blindness, paralysis. But it also could represent a picture of lost souls blinded by the devil, crippled by sin. And they were waiting for the moving of the water. And the moving of water was from heaven and not from earth. And there was no healing virtue in that water until that certain time. There were the blind who could not see. There were the lame who could not walk. There were the withered who were deformed and paralyzed. And there were so many who were poor and begging. And notice that the identity of these had no bearing on their being healed. No one received special attention because of who they were. There was no special support or interest group that went from porch to porch doing social assistance. No one had advantage over the others. Being wealthy had no advantage. Being good had no advantage. Having a good heritage had no advantage. Being the poorest had no advantage. And this would tell us that no one could claim any advantage when coming to Jesus. Acts 10.34 says, Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. You have the same access to Christ as does anyone else. This man needed Christ's forgiveness. He needed his redemption. The rest of the porch dwellers needed that same healing touch. And that was much more important than any physical healing. But sometimes God gives both. These people were sick. These people were sinners. These people were sentenced. John 3.18 says, He that believes on him is not condemned, but he that believes not is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. All of us are condemned to die. The fact that man is a sinner automatically sentences us to death. 
Jew and Gentile. Heritage carries no influence. Kings, queens, and presidents all have a descendants. And we see this multitude. They're sick. They're sinners. They're sinners. And in verse 5 of John, we see a certain man. No name is given. No personal details are given. It could be any man. It represents you and me. And Jesus comes to him. John 6 to 44 makes it clear. No man comes to me except which the Father has sent me. Draw him, and I raise him up on the last day. Jesus went to him, and he asked him, Do you wish to get well? Did we just stop again? No, we didn't. Okay. <laughs> and he lost all hope of ever being healed. Had his heart withered as well as his limbs. The man had been ill for 38 years. There's no doubt that this man was born with a disability. He was incurable. He was unable to redeem himself. That's you and me. We're diseased. We're incurable. We're born with an incurable disease called sin. And without the intervention of Jesus Christ, we're going to die and go to hell. There are no exceptions. The 38 years that this man lived in that condition is only a picture of God's grace. It tells us before the man died, God intervened and healed him. And if you're watching this and you're a Christian, it's not because you're something special. It's by the grace of God. Before you died in your sin, God intervened in your life and healed you. He came and convicted of your sin and drew you to him. That man had tried to make it to the pool on his own, yet he couldn't. That's like you and I trying to prepare ourselves from heaven. Our efforts will never get us to the healing station. Turning over a leaf will bring nothing but greater disappointment. Trying to elevate ourselves up to the spiritual ladder will bring nothing but disappointment. Don't let disappointment overtake you today. Jesus is waiting to deliver you. He said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears my voice, I will come into him. I will dine with him and he with me. That may have been his last year. He may have thought, If I don't get there today, I will never get in. Because, see, he knew that time was eventually going to run out. It's going to run out for everyone. There will be a time when you say no for the last time. And Jesus walked up to him and said, Do you want to be healed? Every person must answer that question. No one gets saved against their will. No one goes to heaven because they don't want to be there. And you notice that Jesus didn't pat him on the head and say, Keep your chin up. It's going to be all right. Jesus comes to you and says, do you want to get well? What's going to be your answer going to be? And then our Lord cures him with the words, rise, take up your bed, walk. He's told to rise up and walk. That's a strange command given to a man who can't do it. But it tells him, my words have divine power, get up and walk. And the conversion of a sinner is the cure of a chronic disease. Arise, walk turn, live. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burdened soul found liberty. Where? At Calvary. Jesus didn't say let me help you get into the pool. His message had nothing to do with the pool. He said stand up. Walk the aisle. Take your bed. Walk. And if you're not saved, God's message to you is stand up. Make the decision. Rise up. Take up your bed. Walk. If you're a believer already, it might be take your Bible and tell someone. It might be help others. It might be trust and obey. Matthew eleven twenty eight says, Come to me, all you that labor and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. And sometimes it's a matter of simple obedience to rise up and keep walking, even when we don't want to. Maybe you got a ton of pressure upon you. Jesus says, Come to me. Maybe you've talked to various ones about your problems and there seems no answer. Jesus comes to me. Maybe the money matters in your house are hurting. Come to me. Maybe you feel alone. Come to me. Maybe whatever your problem is, Jesus says, come to me. And if you're still lost in your sins, Jesus calls out to you today. Do you want to get well?